And thanks for joining us on PM Express tonight. I'm pretty sure you may have heard. It was a major uh, address today uh, by the former agri minister. And uh, as you know, he is firmly in the presidential race to lead the MPP into the 2024 elections. And so tonight, he's going to spend some time with us as we look at the big ideas he laid for today when he appeared uh, in the UPSA uh, auditorium to lay forth his plan. Fundamentally, he is a man of a Greek, and we'll track his track record very shortly. You see that he's done a Greek almost all his entire adult life, and he makes a very important bold point. We can build Ghana, we want through agriculture, is, is what he's focusing on. And for him, a Greek could be the pillar around which we, we thrive as a country. And if you look at some of the key points that he raised, for those who have been followed, who are now getting home and haven't paid attention to the uh, former Greek minister, Dr. Usifri Akoto, a key point to highlight from what he said today. He said, there shall be a newly created agricultural management team. I'm sure you've heard about the uh, economic management team. It's a very famous body. He's uh, proposing to create a similar one, but this time just for the management of the agri sector. He'll break that down for us, why that is such an important part of his plan. And then he makes the point that Ghana has improved this food security index and made food available uh, to all. This is stressing his own personal record, but also makes a point about uh, Ghana is not only feeding itself, he says, we become the bread basket of West Africa. And then he tells us a bit about the, uh, some of the key numbers that he, under his watch, the agri sector, has managed to, to put together, and some of them pretty interesting. So he talks about the fact that the uh, total production uh, by the application of uh, improved seeds and fertilizer alone amounted to some 47.5 billion Ghana cities between 2017 and 2021. And the reason why this struck me was because of the link he made between that and the possibility of Ghana, if we do this well, avoiding and another IMF program in the future. And for me, that is important. We'll look at that when, when, we, when we get to speak to him. There are a few other things that we've also tracked. As I said, we're not just trying to understand the man a bit. If you look at his track record, a Greek seem to be at the forefront of most everything is done. Of course, we know he's a former Greek minister, member of parliament in Kwadaso, a deputy ranking member on the food and agriculture uh, affairs. Again, a Greek uh, consultant. World Bank and the United Nations of Commodities, CEO of the Goldcrest uh, you know, Commodities Limited and Plantation Resources, economist, senior economist, principal. So th this is a man who's been there and done that over the years. And he wants to bring that to bear um, when it comes to the subject of the economy. And, uh, but we believe he's going to run if he gets the nod. And remember that this is a primary first. Two things that will, will, many people would like to scrutinize. One, his own track record, which I believe is what he did today. He, he didn't shy away from his track record. He took it on strongly. And then we also have to run on President Kufuado's own track record as well. I mean, because obviously, anybody who wins the race will run on a Kufuado's track record. But if you were a minister before, you run on your own track record. The beauty of what happened today is that the, uh, Dr. Ifri Akoto was clear in laying out what his own track record in the agri sector is. We will stay with that a bit more when we sit with him. As for the track record of Akufado, it only comes to play if he wins the flag bearership contest of the NPP. And then at that time, I'm pretty sure we'll get to talk to him again if that happens. And then we'll see whether it's a track record that he's proud of and he wants to stand with. And so that's one of the things we'll be looking at uh, when, when, when we speak to him. So stay with me. He's already seated here on the show. When we return from this quick break, I'll be picking his thoughts. Why does he really want to be president? Because fact, that's the ultimate objective. Why? I want him to encapsulate that for me uh, a, in a bullet point. And then we'll get to interrogate a bit of that. Stay with me. And my guest is with me in the studio is Dr. Owusu Efri Akoto, and welcome to PM Express. So, you recently resigned from, from government. You've been in government for six years. That's correct. I'm curious. So, it's been, what, at least two months since your resignation? Well, what have you been up to? Well, I've been resting. 
after running for six years, you ought to rest. So I've been resting, taking it easy. You have been? Yes. I mean, what I saw of you today didn't look like somebody who had been resting. It looks like you've been preparing. <laughs> Is that fair? Well, that's fair. I mean, work comes naturally. So basically, whilst resting, we're also working. Okay. And we're working for the very reason why we resigned from the government, which is to prepare oneself for the flowers you raise ahead of us later on this year. Okay. Do, do you miss <coughs> the hurly burly of government, business, cabinet, you know, a Greek ministry? Do you miss it? Well, well, if you say miss it, when I wasn't in government, I was in parliament. When I wasn't in parliament, I was in business. And for me, it's the same. 24 hours is not enough. I just love working. So I always find something productive to do. Okay. The energies are flowing, and we, have, we ought to use the energy for the service of God, which is for service of the, of the human race. So that's the philosophy. Something you've done, as I said, all through your life, I mean, as we tracked all the way back, you've held very significant positions, both pri in a private practice and in government and in public service. So why do you want to be president? Well, I want to be president uh, because I want to be the flag bearer of the MPP, which is what is driving me, to give an opportunity for me to make a, a contribution to the new patriotic party. As you saw in 2020 elections, the results were not very satisfactory. Now we have 137, NDC has 137. We came from 169, we lost what, 36, net of 36 constituencies. Our presidential candidate, Nanado Dankwe Kufuado, who beat Mahama by 1.5 million votes, unprecedented in the Fourth Republic. The, the, the vote dropped to only half a million in 2020. And the puzzling thing is, given the first term of Akufuado, where there was no COVID and things were running for this country, rate of growth of agriculture, of, uh, of uh, the economy and so on. One would have thought that Ghanaians would actually give us a pat, a pat on the back by voting for even higher numbers than 2016. But what happened? We nearly lost parliament. And now, of course, 187, 187, the only difference between majority and minority is one independent candidate who decided to, to work with us was previously a member of parliament for MPP. So you see that we are not in a good place. And the, the, the interesting thing is, this sharp drop in our performance at the election in 2020 wasn't because of the message or whatever promises NDC were given. It was to do with the party. See, the party is the machinery. If I called an Uber here to take me to my house and the Uber comes and the engine is broken, I could sit in that car forever and ever, it won't move. Was the party's engine broken? Well, the party's, yes, of course. <laughs> and this is reflected because why is it that we have good performance in the first time? We, uh, the, the, our position didn't have any message, NDC didn't have any message for, 20, uh, for the 2020 election. And yes, we, we nearly lost. Parliament and the uh, majorities have, have been cut down. So, and it's all because, as I said, it, it, uh, given the performance of the government, is the party and the affairs of the party, which for me, that's where I put my finger. So we need- Precisely what with the party though? Well, the party in terms of unity, in terms of conflicts within the party and all kinds of things. My own backyard, Ashanti region, I commissioned a study in all the four, uh, 47 constituencies except one, no offense in North. If I showed you the report, you'll be amazed. What did he say? The conflicts within the party, the, and, and the, the, uh, the MP 
uh, not on good terms with the chairman, the chairman fighting the DCE, uh, all kinds of uh, affairs. And when across the country, where I saw it most was central region, where everywhere you went, they're talking about skirt and blouse, skirt and blouse. And of course, that's where we lost most, most of Skirt our and blouse where they were voting for the president, rejecting the yeah, MP? Exactly, exactly. So, and that is consistent. If you, if you analyze the results of the, you see that there's something wrong with our party. And that is also shown in the internal election results that we just uh, finished in 2022 where at the constituency level, 70% of, of uh, incumbent uh, uh, officers were voted out. 70%. I mean, you, you, you saw what happened at, at the Crossfall Stadium. Of the 10 positions, only two officers were able to retain their position, Nasser and the woman organizer, who went on a post. So, there's something wrong with our party. But hasn't that cured the challenger? Because if you've cleared that old stock... But that's what I'm coming to. That in human history, no amount of the will of the people to go in one direction succeeds without a leadership which understands the problem. So this is where I'm coming from. That uh, I'll be given the opportunity by the delegates in the course of this year to beg the flag of the MPP, and then I would, whatever it takes, even if it's a week, at least the kind of measures that I have in mind to bring it to the party would, would ginger our, our party. Tonight, action. there are thousands of delegates who will be watching you. That's right. So tell, tell them, those who are listening, what specifically, if you win the Nord, would you do to fix this broken party? Well. Two things. One is discipline. Two is their situation. Because everywhere you go, in Yashi, in Yashi, a comedian, everywhere you go. And you know, in my job, for the, for the six years, in five of those six years, I go around the country. I'm not somebody who sits in the air conditioning in Accra. I go out there every year. And I have the opportunity to meet farmers. A lot of them are party people. And they will tell you. Yeah, apart from what you've come to discuss about the work on the farm and so on and so forth, they, they complain. So it gives you an idea, apart from the conflicts, the conflicts are due to the fact that discipline in the party is not, is not enough. And we don't really insist on the rules. I mean, people break the, the, the party rules and nobody comes to say anything to them. And it, it just festers. And you need discipline in any organization. So, and the discipline comes from the leadership, which can really make all that uh, difference in the way the party is, uh, is organized. So for me, we need to fix this party. In other that we can sustain ourselves in power come 7 December, 2024. And until that, we are in very serious uh, problem, especially now, as we all know, we're in an economic crisis. We haven't even concluded what we are doing with the IMF. We are hoping that the board will take a decision to accept the recommendations of the, the staff recommendations and all that. So we are still mm -hmm. some I, I get the here. sense that you believe the grassroots of the party may have been neglected. So well, that's I mean, what they are telling you when you but, go but around. That's a, that's, a, that's a complaint. And not only the, not only the polling stations. Mm. All the way, you know, the polling stations are organized in our party into electoral areas. And they, they have a coordinator. They are coordinators plus the, the, the constituency executives. All the way up. Complaints everywhere you go. And they feel free to interact with me and tell them their problems. Because they know that most of them are farmers. You know, the rural areas, they are nothing but farming. And they, 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 they feel free to talk to me about this, their state and the state of the party and all that. Mm -hmm. So morale is not very high. But it's interesting. But if most of them are farmers mm -hmm. and you were their Greek minister, yes. why haven't you fixed the problem Which with, with, with your no, members then, who are farmers yeah, no, who are no, complaining? But, but we are talking about the party. I'm government. True. Okay? There are people who are supposed to be 
in charge of the party. At the moment, I've just come out of government. I'm not, I don't hold any position in the but party. But the truth is that if you address a national challenge with farming and farmers, mm -hmm. they will benefit in yeah, yeah, yeah. But, well. but the thing is that the party has a hierarchy. The party is the one, its officials, the managers at the constituency, at the polling, they are the ones who are responsible. I don't go there to meet them to talk about the party primarily. I go there to talk about their work, what we can do to assist them to have better yields, better income, and all those things, okay? Uh, this thing about the party comes at the tail end, you know, and, and I don't have all the time. Because mm. <laughs> this so those delegates you expect a change in your circumstance mm. if you win the flag uh, yes. contest. And, and this will come in the form of, because I've had many in your party say this thing, they'll say, well, they want to introduce business ventures that empowers party grassroots folks mm -hmm. to then be self-empowered. Yes. What, what's your approach? Well, what's your proposed approach? Well, the proposed appro approach is, you know, we have a lot of contracts. Uh, government is the biggest business giver in this country. And if the military can have companies to do business, why can't political parties? The ANC in South Africa owns mines, it owns manufacturing concerns, it owns insurance companies and so on. They have to be more entrepreneurial. That's what I'm saying. As a key to all these things about Yenyafi and all that. Mm. You need to, the party as a body should have some business uh, uh, edge to raise income for themselves rather than expect government or anybody to come and finance them. Uh, before we move on to the, your main national vision, which I guess for the delegates who will elect you, they don't only have to elect somebody who can fix your party problem, but somebody who can win elections for them yes, sure. in 2020, 2024, which is the ultimate agenda. So we'll come to the big agenda, part of which you lay out today. But still on the part before we move on, as we speak tonight, we still don't know when a party is holding a, you, the, the national primary. But, but that, primary. That, that shows you what I, when I talk about problems with the party, it's exactly that. Why? The NDC, they started their internal elections well after we'd finished ours in July 2022. They've come, they've done everything. They, now it's 14th November, to, uh, May to pick forms. The, the candidates are, are, are talking to constituencies and so on. And we still haven't been able to fix the date. That, that is, that why? Is. Well, I mean, I'm not a member of the council, which is the ultimate body which uh, makes these decisions. But obviously, it's indecision. Everybody knows. We are, if you ask me when I, uh, the election, I would say I don't know. Why? Because the party hasn't fixed it. So we're all waiting for the party to come up. And that is a symptom of, this, of the things that I've talked about by this party. That's a, a very simple decision of fixing a date to elect an elective flag bearer becomes an issue. What's your preference when you want that thing, the party's primary held? Whatever I want, we are now in the middle of March. So the issue has resolved itself. You cannot say that you are going to have, what is the, people talk about early elections, late elections. True. Early elections, March, we are in the middle of March, when is early elections then? Early. Gone. <laughs> That's gone. Early elections could be, I'm, I'm told early elections, for those who hold early elections, they say August. Those who want late are looking at, you know, first week of possibly January or late December or mid-December or in December. Um, are you for any of these or you just want it done? Well, I want a decision. Okay. And then based on that, I will uh, organize my campaign for that election. I'm not going to go around the country when I don't know when. Like, so you haven't started campaigning yet? Well, no. That's what you said. Two my, nearly well, over a month now, you haven't heard from me. Today is my first entry into the campaign. So today, was the lecture was your first entry? Yes. Okay. And to share my vision for the future of the economy of this country, the key lies with agriculture. Mm. And we'll and come to that. Yes. If I will spend the rest of the time, 30 minutes, talking about that, because that's really what I want to right. hear. But finally on that, since the party hasn't specified a date, some in the party believe that going out to campaign is actually a violation of... Yeah, of it is. That's why I've been quiet. 
But you have launched today when I No, I haven't launched. No, okay, not launched. I, you have listen, made a showing. Listen, I have gone to speak to university students mm -hmm. to share my vision how we can get out of the clutches. There's a company event? Of, no, a company no, event. no, no, it was a public lecture. It was a lecture, yes. <laughs> okay. But in effect, it's a campaign event. Well, that's your interpretation. But whatever it is, I'm saying that I respect this party and its regulations. People are, some people are taking undue advantage and doing all kinds of things. I won't do that. Your colleagues that's are right. doing a proper Well, call. Well, that's theirs. That's their business. But I'm saying... You think they are violating the party? Well, no, I don't think anything. Oh, what I'm saying, I'm not a judge. But you've said yeah. indiscipline is a key problem. Yes. Is that part of the indiscipline? Well, I don't know. I mean, somebody should... If once you make the rule, somebody should keep the rule. You see, these are some of the symptoms that I talk about. Somebody responsible should be able to slap the, the, the wrist of people who say, you can't do this. As in you Where can party chairman in Ashanti, for instance, openly campaigning for candidates, is against the rules of this. Are they? Well, I mean, yes. I mean, you, you should know better than I. Mm. <laughs> the public utterances you haven't heard. Don't pretend as if you don't, you don't live in Ghana, please. Okay? So all these things are symptoms of, is what, of what I'm talking about. Wrong with this party. Mm. Let's talk about the big vision. You've said today, quote, we can build the Ghana we want through agriculture. Absolutely. So as far as you're concerned, this entire economy called Ghana can be transformed if we get a great right. Yeah, for, for a very simple reason. Tell me. It is to do, our problems are to do with what uh, we call cash flow. Okay. So we are having to go and borrow and borrow and borrow every now and then. Ghana has been to IMF six, 17 times since independence, 66 years. And we'll continue to do that until we find a source of reliable foreign exchange and, and, and fiscal surpluses to build our country. We've been digging gold in Obuasi for how long? Over 100 years. Yeah. Where has that gotten us? We are the first, the second biggest gold producer. Where has that gotten us? It's just gotten us into the hands of the IMF. Oil, which President Kofor's time was discovered, was going to take us out of our many problems. What has it done? Oil production, even <laughs> recently, has been going down. Okay, so these things won't solve our problem. If we rely on gold, and oil and all those things will forever go back to the IMF and IMF and IMF. We'll continue to borrow. And this significant uh, uh, development, economic development that we all wish could happen, will never happen. Agriculture is one reliable sector which can give us the cash flow to enable us to fund all our activities, industrial, uh, to fund agri uh, industrial development, our health, our education, our infrastructure, the motorways and the bridges and all those things that we want. It is the only one. But we haven't been uh, prioritized it enough to do that. That is my, 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 my thesis. And that what we have done, the Akufuado government has done, is to provide the foundations upon which this can happen. You made the word prioritize, and I, yes. I, you, I see that in your lecture today. Mm -hmm. Ghana has to prioritize agricultural transformation right. at the highest level of government. Yes. You call that a political will. Mm -hmm. Are you implying that the government you were part of for six years didn't prioritize agriculture? No, within the limits, they did. But the thing is that, I can, I can tell you, running the ministry, whole areas that needed resources couldn't be done because there are other uh, um, uh, um, activities which are also taken from the same pot. That's the, that's the problem. They can run that you say, exclusively based on channeling all resources. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that we need to prioritize and make agriculture the center of the priority. But you prioritize agriculture in your six years in Well, I mean, no, no, I cannot prioritize. The president? No, did. no, yes. I mean, there is a pot. 
Okay? Everybody is pulling, you know, we, the president's priority, uh, one of the priorities is free education. So you look at a, a budget for education, a balloon, and it's supporting a free ed education. So every president has their own vision that they come with. And you are, you are part of that government. So other sectors government. took priority over agric well, in the I last mean, six years. Or, or what I'm saying is that at least I'm giving you the example of the free education, which is a very laudable uh, priority. But I'm saying that for me, the priority should uh, would be agriculture. And not education? Well, I mean, <laughs> but where do you fund education from? See, the social sectors should be funded from the economic sectors. Economic sectors are industry and agriculture. Industry is underdeveloped and needs a lot of private sector uh, investment to be able to take off the way it will impact and transform us. But we don't have the means to do that. Agriculture is habited by 3.1 million farmers in this country. My experience with them in the six years is that with the least incentive, they will deliver. The, agri the farmers? The farmers will deliver. Look, I've worked with farmers around the globe. For 18 years, I was going around all the five continents, including Africa, advising governments on agricultural policy, commodity policy, this and that and that. And I know the attitude of farmers. In some countries, governments virtually beg farmers to do this or to do that. And I'm really, the discovery for me is the way Ghanaian farmers respond to the minimum incentive given. But you gave and them the is, minimum incentive. No, no, yeah, yeah, but what I'm saying, minimum, I mean the things we were not there before, we were giving them in significant quantities. Wow. I mean, we started, for instance, improved seeds of uh, maize, rice, soya, granules, uh, millet, and all of that. We're giving improved seeds. We started 24, uh, 2017 planting for food and jobs. 4,400 metric tons that we distributed to 202,000 farmers. By 2021, that figure of 4,400, we were doing 38,000 metric tons this time to 1.7 million farmers. But that number... But, but this, is, this is where I'm saying that they have really, if you look at the yields, there's been a steady increase in yields in these areas, which is precisely what we wanted it to be. That productivity will increase and then the sector will be more But efficient. that data you just shared mm -hmm. proves the fact mm -hmm. that in the last six years, mm -hmm. the president with you mm. as his able man mm. prioritize agriculture? Well, no, it means that the, the, the performance has, has, been, has been better than before, but that it could have been, because these figures I'm talking about, three, four metric tons per hectare from one and two and three and four, we could go to 10. Yeah, but Doc, I hear you but, say- but, but that's the, that's that's the point. Let, let me put that it bluntly. Resources... I, I hear you say mm -hmm. that the precedent did not fully prioritize agriculture no, in the last six years. No, no, no. I, I, I did, well, what I'm saying is that the budget that I needed to run the, the, the sector, the country couldn't afford it because budget allocations are done for all sectors. So whatever comes to me doesn't mean that that is the priority. It is what has been allocated. And, and that's the point I'm making. So all the sectors, yeah, what I mean, how many ministries and so on and so forth, Everyone has to have a little. But when I say priority, it means that you, you, what is not what you will get from the allocation, but what you require to make the impact. What did you uh, require before. that you didn't get in the last six years? For instance, every year um, I was asking for, say, 1.6 billion Ghana cities, 2 billion Ghana cities, and because the, the port was small, it's cut back to maybe a billion or 800,000, 800 million, see, for the ministry. That's what I mean, that if 
in an attempt to give everybody a little bit. The, the priority should be given to agriculture to the extent that if we needed two billion, it's not going to be 900, but it's going to be one point something close so that you can actually go ahead and implement. The, the Tree Crop Development Authority is a classic example. When I went to cabinet with a recommendation that that authority should be given $3 million uh, seed fund for the next three years, so 15 million. We are in the third year of that authority. And so far, the authority has received only $1.3 million. So that's the kind of thing I'm talking about. Mm. You made a very bold declaration today, and I think you've touched on it here. And coincidentally, we had an IMF program. You said that Agric is the only way Ghana can avoid going to the IMF. And I asked the question, if this was true, then after six years in charge of running a flagship program, then why are we back there? No, I think that you are taking a very short-term view of things. See, agriculture is a natural resource activity. It's not like a factory where you put this in and immediately you get something out. But six so years is a long time. But, yeah, but that is what I'm saying, that these these constraints of budgetary constraints limits one as to what one can do. And that's precisely what I'm saying. So you're confident that, that if you had all the resources, you wouldn't yeah. have gone to the IMF? Yeah. What I'm saying is that this tree crop development authority, for instance, the potential foreign exchange earning from the six crop that we have chosen can be anywhere between six billion to 12 billion. And I'm not imagining, Cote d'Ivoire has five crops, which gives them seven to eight billion dollars every year. Ghana, the same, if you put it together, is not even two billion, mm. you understand? So it demonstrates to you the potential for this, what I call the cash flow, that if Ghana was making six, seven, eight billion a year from these crops, in a diversified policy as we are trying to lay the foundation for. Well, will there be a need for farmer? For floor, we are in IMF for three billion over three years. So a billion, billion, billion. If you have now in law an authority which can generate six to twelve billion dollars after seven, eight months of uh, years of implementation, well, you have to take the first step. By, by getting that organization off the ground. It is now, right? Because yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, in, it's, in, it's based in Kumasi, but it's almost Maribond because they, they don't have the resources. Why? This is what I'm saying, that so far, instead of... There are other competing needs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is what I'm saying. It's, a, it's as simple as that. I, I want, I'm using that as an example. Yeah, it's a good example. I mean, so it, yeah. it, it nails the problem down. Yeah. So it's been... When was it created? 2020. Okay, and it's the president inaugurated it in Kumasi. I remember this. Yes. You were there with him. Yes. And you see, it's moribund. Well, I mean. So, so why do you spend all this money to do it and then just leave it to, well, I mean, to become uh, a uh, white uh, elephant? Uh, no, it's not a white elephant. What I'm saying is moribund because the resources that it needs that were recommended based on studies and so on, only 25% had gone to it. Yes, and, and you know. Let, let me ask you, uh, just out of curiosity. I'm pretty sure you knew this before you resigned. In cabinet, did you raise this? And what was the response that oh, he gave yes. you? you? know, Because I've, I've, the listen, Ghanaians would like to know, did you listen, fight for listen, these beliefs? Listen, listen, did you fight for these beliefs listen. when you were in there? But let me remind you, as a cabinet minister, I swear an oath of secrecy. I can't come here and tell you what happens in cabinet. You should know it better than that. So you shouldn't be asking that question. Well, I mean, <laughs> but we're asking because you want to be president. The Ghanaians who are listening tonight, I believe if I'm listening to you, I, I wonder. So you want, me to break, you want me to break my oath? No, not exactly. But, yeah, yeah, but that is exactly but what But it will stop me from, for, for, for the viewer from asking the question. He says he wants to do this now, but he was in there. Did he fight for these beliefs when he was in there? You, it's a fair question, isn't it? You saying, admit it's it. It is a fair I'm, question. I'm, I'm saying I am under oath. I'm not supposed to tell you what goes on in cabinet, but if you know my character, I'm not somebody who will sit in a corner and weep, okay? 
So well, let's leave it there. Mm. <laughs> Another way of asking, what, what did you do about the problems when you realized these are my challenges? Because as a leader, you solve problems. So when Dr. Friaco to realize that this is the way out, but they are competing needs and the pot is small, what did he do about it? I, I have to draw attention to it, which I did. But, but I understand the circumstances. Because the, the pot wasn't growing any bigger, but the demand in the pot was growing bigger and bigger every day. So that is why we find ourselves in the arms of the IMF. What I'm saying is that we need to make a start of trying to get resources within this country. The land is there, the people are there, water is there, the sun is there. We have a law creating, and in fact, there are four such authorities that are in the pipeline, apart from this one, which has gone through parliament. I noticed that, and I want to run through that for yes. those who don't know, the yes. tree crop development authority is what you've yes. mentioned, the yes. poultry development authority yes. Yes. is the one you mentioned, the grain development authority, exactly. Exactly. the horticultural development authority, these four are, of them. Yes, these are all models in Ghana Cocoa Board structure, whereby after the initial fund, uh, seed fund, like I, we are recommending for uh, the Tree Crop Authority, these authorities will be able to raise funds from the commercial market on their balance sheet. Cocoa Board doesn't have anything to do with the Ghana budget. They go abroad, syndicate a loan every year, come and do their trading and pay them back and so on. So they are independent of the budget. The essence of these authorities is to do the same, that they will ultimately, in a short period, start going to the market instead of having to rely on government to fund them. Mm. And you address a point, and I guess maybe somebody had raised it with you, which is that these are bureaucratic agencies. But at the time when the country is obviously struggling, it will add to the size of government already. Four different authorities, yes. different individuals will be yes. appointed, different you know, working terms and conditions. Yeah, but, but you, you know, <laughs> you can't make an omelet without breaking an egg. You can't. You have to invest in something. And the institutions to carry these out should be there. You, can't, you, you, you just can't. I mean, for instance, grains. We have a lot of maize, rice, and so on going across our borders in a very informal manner. People bring CFA France into this country, Naira into this country, go to the black market, they change, they buy these goods, put them on a, a truck, and it goes across the border. Mm. These are leakages. And it became so significant that the president had to give authority for us to temporarily ban the movement of grains across our borders. Because we have used the taxpayers' money to subsidize this input for the farmers to grow it. And the Ghanaian taxpayers had a right to benefit from it, not others from Nigeria, Burkina Faso, Togo, and, and others. So this is why that ban was put in place. But even then, mass uh, uh, breakaways, I mean, people now, I can say it's smuggling because it's illegal. Three months, uh, uh, November, or was it September last year? 16 articulated trucks full of uh, uh, rice, paddy rice, were stopped at Tatale. They were going to Nigeria. 16 articulated trucks. Even if it's 1,000 tons each of them. So we're talking about one instant, 16,000 metric tons of paddy rice going across the border. See, these are some of the things which will show you that Ghana has the surplus. If Nigeria was self-sufficient in rice, they won't come all the way, I don't know how many thousands of kilometers here, to come and take paddy from here. But it's also if, possible. If, and Nigeria if, is often a better market, better price. No, well, I mean, paddy. no, no, no. But you, you have to understand that. If Nigeria was self-sufficient, look at the transport cost. All the things about customs and bribery on the way and all of that, they will still come and take 
buy paddy from us. In some cases, going to even the farm gate to buy paddy. Now, if Ghana didn't produce a surplus, would anybody break, come from Niger, Burkina Faso, some, some cases as far as Mali to come and take it? But there's it? a sort of element in, in economics, which is, and thankfully you are a guru in that field. If the Nigerian businessman feels that I can get it cheaper in Ghana, of mm. course he will leave Nigeria and come to Ghana and buy. Mm. Isn't that another yeah, yeah, reason but, why that is the no, case? Well, I mean, the fact is, if there was no surplus, he could use all the gold in the world, he wouldn't get anything here. That's the point I'm making. Mm. But if I'm a private guy and I'm producing rice, yes. even if there is, there is a lack of adequate rice in mm. Ghana, and I can find my rice to Nigeria at a, at a higher price. I will mm. find a way to take the rice out. Yeah, but it's not Ghanaian traders taking rice from here. It's the Nigerian traders coming here to take our rice. Mm. That's the point. Let's talk about the ultimate measure, I believe, of a success of any agricultural implementation uh, policy, which is food security. And you talked about that today. And I, I want to give you an point to address a, a, a discrepancy that we realize, which is that you made the point that under your watch, you've improved the food security index. I look at the 2022 food security index, and we are ranked... Which one are you talking about? Oh, this is the, um, the food security index, according to The Economist. No, I have my own food security index. Which is what? Yeah, it's there. That, that's what, that was the one I was talking about. I mean... So, so, so uh, we, economic we, we, intelligence unit in London. Where do they get their information from? Well, I'm curious about yours. <laughs> I'm curious about yours. I mean, I, I'd like to pull it, I, I'll come to that. I'm curious about, so what, what, is, what, what is yours? I, I think, I think... It, it is important. Are, no, no. I think we are doing well just staying on the big issues. Yeah, but this is a big one. No, it is not. It I mean, the not. food security Listen, index. There, there, are, there are many... Measures there are many the extent to which your input, all the work you've done, is leading to an availability of food no, in abundance for everybody. But, but my food security index is this... This thing here. Okay. This uh, is according to the Greek Ministry. And it shows that you are, in 2021, you were at 8.4%? No. I'm saying that it's not about food, the old food security index. It's the rate of growth of the agricultural sector for the last 15 years. This is what it is. And this is what is real. Okay? That the rate so, of so you're, growth. So you're looking at the rate of growth? Yes. The rate of growth of the agricultural sector which is part of the rate of growth of the economy of Ghana. You see that there's an acceleration for the last four or five years. That's what we should be talking about. So, because this is government, official government statistics. But the finance with the ministry... Sector, with the sector of agriculture right here, where everything is black and white. So, so the rate of growth, if you look at the 2022 budget and mm. 2023 budgets, Budget. The budget. That, that's the finance ministry. Mm. Finance ministry says a great growth, rate of growth for 2021 was 8.4%. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 2022 was 4.9%. Yeah, yeah, but... That's a significant it, drop. No, 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 please. Look at the long term. Don't look at every... Well, because, well, see, well, I, well, I, well, I see... You are, you, are, you are trying to behave as no. if... That Let, let's put the culture is in the laboratory. So, so, and the, so I want to, so I want to do that. So I want to do that. Like, I mean, the, the thing you know about us, we will always do the research. And you can see, we tried to, we did a, a line graph to this to try. And true, when you came in, you met a six point two. It went down what, again. What is six point two? Growth rate. Yes. Growth rate. And then it, it went down to four point nine. But then since then, you grew significantly. Mm -hmm. That's true. Twenty nineteen, four point seven, and then it went to seven point three. And it continued to 8.4. The highest in the Fourth Republic. That is true. I think you have that, to no, that, that. that is true. I mean, the data is, is obvious. But then, I you know what they say. You are as good as your last result. Mm -hmm. Your last result was 4.9. No, no, no. From 8.4. Please, don't dramatize this. I know. You know this is, is, no, I'm no, just no, putting out facts. No. Agriculture is a natural resource activity. There's a time lag between taking policies and supporting farmers and when it comes into full production. It's not the year itself which matters. That's why I'm giving you a long-term graph here to look at. You see that the graph goes down and starts going up again. It will come down. It's, it's up and down. But that but drop, the, the, but that but drop the, is significant. No, no, it's the biggest drop we've had since 20, no, since, you, since you, but, you but, were appointed. Yeah, yeah, but you know why? You should know. Please tell me. You don't know about the fertilizer, acute shortage of fertilizer uh, globally? Last year, 
There was no fertilizer. The pricing just shot through the roof. So most farmers who we have trained to use fertilizer could no longer, they couldn't even find it, never mind uh, buying it at a higher price. And that was a significant uh, uh, factor. The other factor is that in the north where most of these uh, uh, things are applied, there were spots of drought all over the place. And if you were to go to Tamale and ask the farmers, they would tell you that last year was bad compared to the previous years and so on. When they, they, they planted, the rains wouldn't come, and then later on the rains came and came and all that. So there are a whole lot of factors. So if you take one year to judge the performance of the agricultural sector, sorry, you, you, you'll be totally wrong. You have to take a, 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 a medium, long term to see the trend. And the trend is very clear here. You see this goes down, it keeps dropping, and you climb, you climb, yes, which, yeah. which is which is yeah. what I, which, yeah. which is the point of me. But you say that that last year's significant drop was because of lack of um, fertilizer and, yeah. the, and, and, the, and the weather, the, and, and the, the weather. weather, yes, and and the weather, and and these but, things but, have, keep happening. But but, but 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 you know what they say: you take credit when it's good, mm -hmm. but you also take credit when it is yes, bad. Yes, the credit should be taken in the medium term, long term, not just one use one year to judge that. This is uh, a failure, or this is a success. Mm -hmm. You'll be making a very sad mistake if you did. So that's that's the agree. So convince me. You made the point that on the whole, for you, agri is the way to transform the economy. Yes. Many will say, but what about um, the education sector? What about the in industry? Everything is important. So yes. there's no priority. I'm saying that we need to prioritize. You, can see you, a, want, to, you want to prioritize agri agri oh, over yes, everything because else. Because I'm convinced from these years that I've managed the sector that with the right amount of resources, we will be able to be airborne and never come back into the clutches of the IMF and other people. Dr. Freya Kutu is president tomorrow. How yes. much of your budget? Are you devoting to the agriculture? Well, I can't tell you. But, but that's, that's, how we can, that's how we can judge no, your priorities. No, 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 you are being speculative. I don't want to speculate. I want to be in charge, like I was in charge of the ministry, and I was able to say, I'm going to do A, B, C. This one is going to cost me five cities. This 10 cities. You put it all together. I need 50 cities to run the, the ministry. And then, of course, because of others and so on, you say, look, uh, no, we can give you only 25 cities out of the But on the free I could tell you, if, if a Greek is going to be your priority, mm -hmm. one of the surest ways for us to be convinced that it will be your priority mm -hmm. is to tell us what you will I don't under your I, presidency. Yeah. I, uh -huh. What your projected budget will be for a grid? No, 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 no. It, it's too early for me to. A percentage. No. A, per a percentage of your entire budget. How much of that will go to a grid? I'm not here to speculate. Please. <laughs> you, don't get, you can't put figures now. It will be a, a, an act of irresponsibility on my part to but say I, to you, oh, when I come, I'm going to do 50% or 10%. Let's leave it. But, but, but that, that is what people want to know no, to no. believe. They, 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 that you no, really I, want to put your is money is, where your mouth is. It's is the vision that I'm sharing with Ghanaians. And visions don't come in, in figures like you are trying to demand. Mm -hmm. It's a vision. I mean, today's lecture was to give the opportunity for Ghanaians, especially the youth. That's why I went to university. To tell them that I believe in the sector that I managed. Uh -huh. Not only manage, I'm also a farmer. I mean, I don't tell this, but I'm one of the biggest farmers in Ghana. Let's talk about that. <laughs> no, forget about it. <laughs> how, how, is, how is it going for you? <laughs> well, but, but going for me. It's, I've been, it's good? I've been exporting coffee from this country for True, 30 that's years. That's why you were, you were a significant yeah, player in yeah, the sector yeah, as well. Yeah. I mean, let us talk about the campaign as we wrap up. So, mm -hmm. when are you hoping to hit the ground running? When so what the should you expect? When the party decides the date and they open the nominations and I go to the party office to pick the forms to fill and submit and they say, yes, also go ahead, then you hear of me. It will, be, it will be bigger than the elephant itself. I see. <laughs> what do you say to those who say, but um, it is a straight two horse race? What do you, I'm sure you've heard this. No, I haven't. You haven't? No. 
So people say, well, it's Alan and Baumia. What do you say yeah, to that? Yeah, it's speculation. It could be anything. <laughs> you know, it's like when you start a horse race, you never know in the 10 horses who is going to win, isn't it? You sit there and say, oh, the five felons, uh, the black one is going to win. At the end of the day, he may not even finish the, fe the two felons. So please. What, what, please. what do you think will, will swing this in your favor? What, you, what, what, what is your My track record. Your track record. Yes. I'm dealing with 3.1 million farmers in this country. That's the census that I conducted in 2018. For the first time in 38 years, nobody had conducted an agricultural census. We are part of the United Nations organization, and it says that every, at least every 10 years, members should do an agricultural census. Ghana didn't do it for nearly four decades. I come in the next year, we put it in place, and we counted 3.1 million farmers, okay? The planting for food and job subsidy benefited 1.7 million farmers. These farmers, naturally, are my supporters. And when I go out there, I see it. They are so appreciative that I've changed with a little intervention. I managed to change their lives in a way. So if I go to them to say that you need a farmer president for the first time in the history of this country, you don't think they will listen? They will listen. So forget about the speculation about who is first and who is second. It's too early for you, Mr. Benza. Too early. Dr. Ousu <laughs> Friakut, I am grateful and we wish you all the best you. once the campaign is open for you. Thank to you very much. Campaign. And hopefully, uh, when the time is right, we'll get to hear his thoughts again, specifically on some of the key areas that he feels passionate about. Enjoy the rest of your evening.